one should use Manjaro. It shouldn't even exist. Now, hear me out. I've used it a few times over the years. I've always been an avid Arch user, or at least for many years. Manjaro is good in theory. Honestly, I kind of like their concept like as a theory per se, but not so much in practice. I'm going to show you a few problem areas and who knows, I might even get lucky as I review the distro. For real, I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I really, really want to be able to show you something in real time why you shouldn't use this distro. The one thing that I will point out here is that it uses a completely different kernel and it tries to morph their own repos in with Pac-Man. And if they were maybe a little more intentional in catching breaking packages or something, maybe I could kind of see this working. See, from the get-go, the idea was to have packages less likely to break, but in 12 or 13 years that I've seen this distro, and all the complaints that I've heard and all of this, this seems not to be true. Like, my experience is that it has never been true, in fact. Personally, I see this as their biggest problem. So one thing that I will give Manjaro a lot of credit for is that I think they were the first distro that I know of. They used the Calamari's installer. I'm a really big fan of it. And that's like one of my favorite installers to install Linux besides the command line. Now, I know people think I'm crazy because I like the command line. and to install things on the command line, but I really do like it. So they went with Arch repos and the Arch kernel and had build packages in the AUR. Do they have a way forward? Not really. I think most people would just simply use Arch Linux at that point or some other Arch derivative, right? But at least it would work. So there would be some who probably still want to use it though, right? I think. But unfortunately, this is a distro that just needs to die. Now, I am willing to be proven wrong. I'm going to just take a look at the distro. I'm going to see if there's any red flags, if anything comes up or anything like that. The first red flag would be, I tried to install the i3 edition last night and I couldn't get the installer to launch. This to me seems very problematic, but I did install XFCE without any problems whatsoever. So let's just go ahead and take a look. I got Manjaro loading up, All right? Let's enter, let's see if I enter my super complicated password. Let's see what desktops, if. Okay, just the XFCE session. Okay, pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Display, that's what it looks like. All right. Let's see here. I can apply that. Keep that configuration. Perfect. Okay, so very good. Um, this is Manjaro XFCE. Now, this is very nice looking, I must say. Um, there are a lot of good things about this. It, everything kind of looks really nice right out of the gate. I will give them that. I am going to see here let's go to system is this one okay so we have add or remove there we go that's what i'm looking for updates uh, let's apply some updates let's see if uh if it will correctly upload okay it's kind of slow but okay definitely not as fast as soulless
I'm really kind of curious about all of this, but hey. Okay. So we need to restart. Okay. So that worked fairly well. I'm not going to restart it. Okay. No packages breaking yet. Okay, this is good. I do think, though, if it, they continue to, if you use this on real hardware and you used it for long enough, be all kinds of packages breaking, but I'll give you that. Very good. They got some really, really nice themes right out of the gate. I always like a dark theme. Oh, Papyrus Maya, one of my favorite, actually. I think that's a great theme. Right out of the gate. Okay. Obviously, they have the XFCE panel. And you could unlock it and put the sucker at the top where it belongs. And you could probably even further customize it. I'm kind of curious about something. Uh, I normally remove those uh, icons, but I'm just going to leave them there for a minute. Okay. So there is nothing here. I thought maybe there would be some further configurations, but no. Okay. We have PAMAC. We have a lot of other things, XFC or this is the whole thing. This is a nice little desktop. Oh, nice transparency. This is a nice touch. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I think HTOP is installed. Yes. 833 megabytes, which is about right, I think. Very good. I kind of like that. So let's kind of see what it comes with. I see the whisker menu here, which is nice. Right? And we have Thunar, we have XFCE. I think that's Firefox. Yeah. In Grandpa, Calculator, Cavantum. Good stuff. Mousepad, Notes, Screenshot, Software Token, Task Manager. Of course, doing our XF burn. Again, what is it with this? Like, nobody burns CDs anymore. Like, for real. Color Picker, GNU, Document Viewer, Vunier, Pigeon. I'm a huge fan of Pigeon, by the way. I actually know the developer. He is such a nice guy. Um, I've talked to him a few times. Very, very nice guy. VLC, Pavu Control. We have LibreOffice. Of course, LibreOffice Math here. We have all the settings stuff that you would probably expect. System, we have, you know, printer stuff, Gparted, the updater, time shift, task manager, XFCE. Time shift is good. That's a good add on to keep this kind of stable. I, I think that's probably the best thing you could do if you were Manjaro. Um, again, I'm not a huge fanboy of this distro because, unfortunately, historically, it's just proven less stable than just running regular Arch. And that's the God honest truth. I'm not trying to hate on them. But other than that, um, this is pretty sleek, pretty respectable. Could I see myself using this? I mean, aside from my hatred for Manjaro, yeah, I love this layout. 
I could definitely use it. Again, I was praying for, you know, just something to happen to where I could sh I could show everyone what it was that I was uh, talking about. But unfortunately, that's the one thing about Manjaro is when it is running well and it's firing on all cylinders, it's one of the best distros out there. So does anything change my mind after looking at this distro? I mean, everything was running and firing on all cylinders, wasn't it? And I think that I pretty much already answered my question. And so I think you probably already know it's a resounding no, right? Why? Because I don't trust that three months down the road, there won't be a package that breaks that makes me have to reinstall my operating system or something like this. But I just have to say, the other reason why I don't think I'm really interested is because this is just a normal looking arch derivative to me. And there's really no benefits to the end user that I can tell, even if they are a beginner. The main indication though, that I would look to though, as far as their commitments concerned is how many times their SSL certificates have lapsed or how many times a website has went down? Hence, many times. And I just don't think they're really committed to maintaining that distro anymore. And I think soon it'll see the same fate as ArchBang and so many others before it. I mean, it's really sad because I know a lot of people really like this distro. And if I'm really honest, I used to really like using this distro. When things are working, the user experience is an excellent experience. But when it's not, nothing works, it seems like. So, with that, see you later, guys. Peace.